Hello guys, in this video we are going to move forward with our discussion of kinematics and the next topic that we are going to cover within kinematics is that of velocity and acceleration. Now to really understand what velocity is, uh, let us draw again our coordinate system. Right, then consider a point P over here. Right, then this would be its position vector. Now, the position vector over here is not constant. That right? what is happening is as the time is passing by in your clock, right, as time is passing by in your clock this the position of this point p is changing so let's say after one second or after a minute or after some time uh whatever time you would like to consider this point p has moved to another point over here right now if i call this p1 and this point p2 actually they are the same points but they different they have different positions Right, so you can consider this point as, uh, let's say, a ball. A ball was initially over here and someone has thrown it and it has moved to point P2. It is the same ball but in different points, right? Now, let's say at some time T1, right, the ball was at P1. So, when, let's say, at 4 o'clock, the ball was at P1, right? This is just an example. So. I'm calling that 4 o'clock time as T1. So this is telling you that at time T1, the body was, uh, the body had a position vector R of T1, right? So at time T1, the body has a position R of T1. Similarly, at some later time, right? After some time, uh, the time will change, right? So if 4 o'clock, if the body was at P1, then maybe after a one minute, that is uh, uh, four o'clock and one minute, the body is at R of T2. So four o'clock, one minute at that time, I'm calling it as T2, right? So at some later time T2, the body is at R of T2. So the position vector of P2 is nothing but R of T2. Right, and this uh, this vector we learned last time was the displacement vector, right? Then we can define a quantity known as the average velocity. Right, then the average velocity is defined as now the average of any quantity in physics can be denoted like this, right, with a bar on top of the quantity, or it can be denoted like this, right. So, averages are denoted like this in physics. So, uh, the average velocity can be defined as r of t2 minus r of t1 divided by t2 minus t1 okay now let's say t2 you can always write t2 as t1 plus delta t Right, what is delta t? Now, this triangle over here is the Greek symbol. Symbol or Greek letter delta. Which is used to represent change. So, it represents change. Right, so delta, that delta triangle symbol 
represents a change in some quantity. So let's say T1 was in your stopwatch. If you have a stopwatch, then T1 was one minute. And delta T is, let's say, uh, another one minute. Then T2 would be two minutes. So you can always say, you represent any time like this, right? Which is T1 plus some delta T is equal to T2, which means that if the body at T1 was at P1, then after some time delta T, it has moved to P2. So that just represents the time required for the body to move from T1, P1 to P2, right? Then now substituting this over here, substituting this definition of uh, T2 over here, we, we can write the average velocity as equal to R of T1 plus delta T minus R of T1 divided by T2 is T1 plus delta T minus T1. Now T1, T1 will get cancelled over here and we would get R of T1 plus delta T minus R of T1 divided by delta T, right? Now if you look carefully in this equation, then you can see that uh, R of T2 minus R of T1, what is that? Do you remember the definition of displacement vector from our previous video? Uh, we know that uh, the displacement vector is equal to R2 minus R1. But here R2 is equal to R of T2 and R1 is equal to R of T1. Hence, the displacement vector is R of T2 minus r of t1 right and hence this is nothing but the displacement vector this quantity on top and hence you can write it as s divided by uh, what is t2 minus t1 if you over here if you take a t1 on the other side then you can easily see that delta t is equal to t2 minus t1 Hence, the average velocity can be represented as the displacement vector divided by delta t, right? Now, what if we make this delta t very, very small? Let's say instead of one minute, we make it very 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 small so small that not even your clocks can measure it right not even your stopwatch can measure no accurate device on earth can measure it we make it so small but not zero right for to understand this consider the number line this is your number line with the numbers on it and zero in the middle right now our this is let's say delta t so this is time t equal to zero and this is let's say some time t equal to t anytime t could be one minute or two minutes or whatever time you like right then delta t is just this much one minute or two minutes right so now what we do is we keep on reducing this t right we take it closer and closer to zero right but not exactly uh, zero. We do not make delta t equal to zero. Delta t is not equal to zero, okay? But it is very, very, very small. It is very close to zero, right? But not zero. It is some, it could be something like 0 0.0000001 or even something smaller than what I can write on this uh, screen. Right, it is very, very, very small, but not zero. Okay, so what I do is I take this line over here, this line, I take it closer and closer to zero. Right, and the way we represent this is limit delta t tending to zero. 
which means that delta t over here is becoming closer and closer to zero but not exactly zero right as i told you this number is very much close to zero and many times in physics while solving numericals even we approximate 0 0.0001 as a zero right we don't even consider that many times in physics while solving numerical problems sorry it's a limit l l i m limit but over here we are speaking of these type of quantities we are saying that delta t is a very 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 small quantity but not zero right then we can define something known as the instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity so instantaneous velocity is defined as the limit of average velocity as the time interval approaches zero as a time interval now here time interval is nothing but the time in which the particle has moved or the ball has moved from p1 to p2 which is which can which is r delta t right so delta t is all our time interval so uh, limit of the average velocity as the time interval approaches zero approaches zero right so instantaneous velocity can be written as limit uh, delta t tending to zero r of t plus delta t minus r of t divided by delta t now here i have just replaced the t1 by t which does not make any difference because whether you write it as t1 you write it as t or you write it as let's say t prime or t star it does not really matter what you call it those are just notations right so this is how we define instantaneous velocity which means that we make delta t very very small you can uh, you can imagine it like this. If the particle was over here, right? Then in a very, very, very small time, the particle has not moved at all, but it still has some velocity. So the particle has a velocity. You can uh, think of it as a snapshot in space, right? If a ball, if a ball, let's say, if you have a ball and you throw it in air, right? And it is in mid air, right? The ball is now in mid air, right? and you take a photo of it right this is the ball b let's call it uh, and you take a photo of this ball right then the ball has some velocity because if it's if the velocity of this ball is zero then you know by common sense that because of gravity the ball will fall down right if you just leave a ball in space not throw it but just leave it then it will obviously fall down because of gravity but we know that the next instant if you take multiple pictures of this ball then it will keep on following its path right what it was supposed to follow right that means its velocity is not zero at that point so for that picture for one picture it has some velocity right v and to take that picture it has taken some time delta t but you know that to take a picture it takes a very small time and you can almost see that the body is still in space. The ball is just frozen, right? As if it is floating, but it has a velocity. Otherwise it will fall down due to gravity. So this is the concept of instantaneous velocity. The velocity that the ball has when you have taken its picture in space, when you have taken that photograph, right? So basically, 
the instantaneous velocity is the velocity of the body at any instant in time. Let's say when you started your stopwatch, uh, the time always starts from t equal to zero. So when you have thrown the ball, the time has started from zero. But let's say after one minute, the ball reaches here, right? After t equal to one minute, the ball reaches here. Then the instantaneous velocity is the velocity of the body which it has at t equal to one minute, right? Or t equal to two minutes or t equal to three minutes, right? Now, if you remember average velocity, it is defined between two points, right? If the ball was here at t equal to zero and here at t equal to uh, one minute, then the average velocity is defined between these two points. But the instantaneous velocity is defined only for a single point. So instantaneous velocity is only defined for that single snapshot, right? Now, if you look carefully at this equation and uh, if you have learned derivatives, uh, which is a part of calculus, then you would know that this is just the definition of a derivative, right? Now, if you do not know what derivatives are, then uh, you should know the that derivatives were invented by Isaac Newton in order to explain uh, his Newton's laws of gravity, right? In order to explain planetary motion, why the why the earth goes around the sun and why the moon goes around the earth to define all that we required a new kind of mathematics which was invented by isaac newton and goes by the name of calculus right so in calculus this is something known as the derivative and you can write it like this so the instantaneous velocity exactly this exactly this you can write as in a more compact way as dr upon dt which just means the rate of change of the position vector with respect to time so this is nothing but the rate of change of position vector with respect to time, right? So basically this derivative tells you how the position of the body is changing with time. And that change of position, as we have just seen in our def even in our definition of uh, average velocity, this velocity just represents the change in position with time right and hence how the position of a body changes with time is given by the velocity of that body and uh, more specifically the instantaneous velocity now there are various notations uh, even to the derivative uh, it is it is also represented like this r with a dot on top this was the notation used by isaac newton And this uh, dr by dt was used by Gottfried Gottfried Leibniz. Gottfried Leibniz. Okay. Now, Gottfried Leibniz had also invented calculus uh, simultaneously along with uh, Newton, right? So they both are inventors of calculus. Sometimes it is also represented like this, R prime. Okay, so this is also uh, one of the notations to represent derivatives. 
Now, uh, similar to velocity, the way velocity is uh, defined as the rate of change of the position vector. Similar to this, we can define another quantity, which is acceleration. Right, so what is acceleration? Similar to the definition to velocity, acceleration is just the rate of change of velocity. Just that, nothing else. So basically, if a point is moving in space, not only its position will change in time, so, but its velocity can also change in time, right? So let's say at this point, its velocity was a v1. And we are going to look at several examples of this uh, uh, type of motion where the velocity is changing with time in our near future, uh, right? And uh, let's say at this point, it has a velocity v2, right? So its velocity can change in time at different points. So at p1, it has some velocity v, v1 and at p2 it has some velocity v2 right then uh, this is the definition of acceleration so acceleration is how tells you how the velocity of a particle is changing with time and now what we can do is this is d by dt of v and v we can write as now i'm just substituting v over here so V, we can write as dr upon dt like this. So I can just write V as dr divided by dt, right? And this uh, so can be written as d square, right? Since there are two d by dt's, it is uh, written as d square r upon uh, dt square. Now be careful d square r upon dt square is not equal to it is not the same as dr upon dt the whole square so just be careful about this okay so d square r upon dt square is not the same as dr upon dt right and it is also represented uh, in newton notations by double dots or uh, it can also be represented like this double prime and there are many such notations but these are some of uh, the most famous notations so here d square r upon dt square or all these notations are known as the second derivatives second derivatives of position vector With respect to time. Now you must have heard of another term called a speed. So what is speed? So speed is nothing but the magnitude. of velocity right so speed is nothing but the magnitude of velocity okay now uh, you might be knowing that any vector let's say we have a vector a then it can be written like this ax x cap plus uh, a y y cap plus a z z cap right where ax, ay, and uh, az are components of uh, the vector a on the x, y, and z axis uh, respectively. So if we have a coordinate system again over here, then uh, any vector, let's say this is a vector a, can be represented like this. 
and it will have some component on let's say this is the y axis this is the z axis this is the x axis then it will have some component on the x y axis call it a y it will have component just means you are dropping a perpendicular from over here you are drawing a perpendicular a line perpendicular to the y axis right then that this distance from here to here from the origin to that point is given by the component of the vector along the y axis call it a y and this distance uh, call it we can call it a z so these are just components similarly you can have uh, one on the x axis right and hence uh, if uh, the velocity is also a vector and can be written as uh, vx x cap where vx is the component of uh, the velocity on the x axis plus vy y cap plus vz z cap and you can write any vector in this manner okay then speed uh, speed is just the magnitude this represents a magnitude of a vector there is bars right then speed is just the magnitude of velocity which is equal to if you know from high school uh, how to calculate the magnitude of a vector you would know that is equal to vx square plus vy square plus vz square and we can actually prove this you know uh, remember that how our velocity vector was uh, uh, written uh, the velocity vector is nothing but dr upon dt right but if you remember the position vector from our previous uh, video, then you would know that it is d by dt of r can be written as x, x cap plus y, y cap plus z, z cap. right so this can be written as uh, dx upon dt now uh, one property of derivative that you should know is that d by uh, dt of let's say x plus y is equal to dx upon dt plus dy upon dt okay so you should know this right so i'm just going to apply it over here so we would get dx upon dt into x cap plus uh, dy y cap dy upon dt plus uh, z cap dz upon dt okay now another thing that you should uh, know about derivatives and other two properties is that uh, dk by dk of x of t of dt okay let me write it in a better way x of t by dt is equal to k d of x of t by dt over here this the k is not a function of time which means it is a constant in time which means this whatever this k is we don't really care what it is right now physically but whatever this k is it is not changing with time okay what is changing with time is x here with this bracket t x bracket t just uh, uh, means that x is changing with time which means x is a function of time right so x of t over here can be uh, let's say t square or it could be sine of t or it could be log of t or anything like that it could be anything any function of time right but k over here just does not depend upon k so example of that would be 2 ln of 2 sine of uh, pi by 2 or anything like that 
which is not depending upon time right so such quantities can be taken out of the derivative so here you can take it out of the derivative and apply d by dt only on the quantity which is x which is changing with respect to time right and uh, one more uh, property of derivatives which you should know is that if you have two functions of time multiplied what if we have something like this x of t multiplied by y of t right then the uh, property for this uh, kind of uh, uh, derivatives is known as uh, the product rule so it is written like this x of t into d by dt y of t plus y of t into d by dt of x of t okay so you should know these two properties of derivative this one is known as the product rule so, so this is known as the product right so applying these over here how do how did i get this how did the uh, how did i get this right now if we again draw our coordinate systems right then uh, from the previous video we already know that there are unit vectors associated with these coordinate systems right there will be a y cap over here there will be a z cap over here and there will be x cap over here now unit vectors are not only drawn this way but actually unit vectors exist everywhere in that coordinate system so that is also a unit vector over here which has unit length okay and that is x cap you can draw a unit vector over here x cap Oh, sorry this is y cap or you can draw a unit vector in this direction which is z cap or you can draw a unit vector over here x cap right so there are several so you it does not matter where you draw the unit vector so it does not matter where you draw your unit vector its magnitude and direction both remain constant so its magnitude and direction are constant in space and hence we are going to apply this law since both magnitude and direction are constant in space and time hence uh, these uh, applying this law here you have, you have seen that the k just goes out of the derivative similarly over here this x cap y cap and z cap will go out of the derivative right so these will come out of the derivatives and you will have only the derivative of x y and z right now from over here uh, we can say that the velocity is equal to vx x cap plus vy y cap plus vz z cap right look over here from this equation and uh, as you can easily see so vx is equal to dx upon dt vy is equal to uh, dy upon dt and vz is equal to dz upon dt now over here you can see that vx is nothing but the rate of change of the particle's position in the x direction dy is the rate of change of the particle in the y direction and dz by dt is the rate of change of the particle's position in the z direction that means that we all along we have been working only with r and v 
right? But actually, the R and V are not just a single equation. They are actually three equations. But using vectors, we have compressed three equations into a single equation, and that is how powerful vectors are. So whoever invented vectors, I don't know who invented vectors, but whoever invented vectors and this notation of vectors uh, really deserves an applause uh, because uh, he has done a great work and reduced our hard work a lot. Right? Just imagine every time uh, we have to write vx, vy, vz, or we have to write dx upon dt, we have to write dy upon dt, we have to write dz upon dt, and uh, how cumbersome and how large the equations will be, right? But with these kind of uh, vector notations, uh, our equations look very small and elegant. But from these kind of vector notations, you can see that we can break the particle's velocity into its velocity in the x direction, its velocity in the y direction, and its velocity in the z direction. Again drawing our coordinate system. If a particle has some velocity, let's say in this direction v, and this is, let's say the y, this is the z, and this is the x direction, then you can break the particle's velocity into its velocity in the y direction, its velocity in the z direction, and similarly, a velocity in the x direction. Right, you can do this. So instead of uh, working generally in all three dimensions, what you can do is you can first find the particle's uh, velocity in the x direction. You can find Vx. You can then find the particle's velocity in the y direction. And then you can find the particle's velocity in the z direction and add it, add it up in this manner. Right, add it up in this manner and you will get its velocity in three dimensions, right? And similar again to velocity, you can write acceleration A as dv upon dt. So that would be dvx upon dt x cap plus y cap dv by upon dt plus z cap dvz upon dt, where dvx upon dt, you can write it as ax x cap plus ay y cap plus az z cap. Where ax, ay, and az, similar to the velocity, are accelerations of the particle in the x, y, and z directions. Now you can also write it like this, x cap, you can write it as d by dt of uh, uh, dx by dt. So we instead of vx over here, I've just substituted dx by dt, that's it. y cap d by dt of dy by dt and a z cap d by dt of dz by dt. So if you can see, can you see over here, this simple vector A actually is this? Imagine there were no vectors and no vector notation, then you every time you are uh, finding the acceleration of the particle, you have to write this lengthy expression. So that is how helpful vectors are. That is how much vectors reduces your work, right? So again, moving forward, we have x cap here. We already know that we can write this as d square x upon dt square plus y cap d square y upon dt square plus z cap d square z upon dt square. Right, you can uh, write it in this manner. So can I write it like this? 
d square upon dt square of x cap x plus y cap y plus z cap z because uh, whether it is the uh, d by dt or it is d square uh, by dt square or whether it is d to the power some n let's say d cube upon dt square or d to the power 4 upon d dt to the power 4 it could be anything but it follows the same uh, rules which is it goes into each and uh, every of uh, term right uh, what i mean is that d to the power n where n is 1 2 3 4 anything and dt to the power n of let's say x1 plus x2 plus x3 is just equal to d to the power n upon dt to the power n x1 plus d to the power n upon dt to the power n x2 plus d to the power n upon dt to the power n x3. Right? So I can write it in this manner now. Right? And then here, what is this x cap x, y cap uh, y plus z cap z? It is just our position vector. And hence we get our old definition of acceleration again. So this is kind of a proof or a derivation that uh, d square r upon dt square is equal to the acceleration. Right? So this quantity over here was just equal to the position vector r. Right, so we just get acceleration is equal to t square r upon dt square. So that's it, guys. In this video, I wanted to explain to you the velocity and acceleration vectors. We'll see you in the next video with more fun concepts in physics.